It's day four, the final day of the competition here at Revere Beach. Uh, we're, we're in plot number one with Paul Hogard, and he's putting the finishing touches on his elephants. He's getting the babies in here. It's so cute. I mean, you can see that it's the public's favorite right now. <laughs> they just really relate to the elephant, you know. So, but it's it's coming together. The babies are starting to so, show some shape here. He's doing his groundwork. It's at this point in time most everybody's on their knees because you start at the top, work your way down, and for the rest of the competition, that's exactly where Paul's going to be. Looks good, though. I like how he put the texture into the elephant to make it look like the old skin. He's he's very good at the elephants the posturing of the elephants and how they look like they're happy and having fun it's a wonderful piece and the people love it we're here with Sue McGrew uh, final day like I say everybody's pretty much on their hands and knees for the rest of the day because you start standing up and it just gets lower and lower it's got a beautiful piece here nice and flowy not sure what it is but by the time we're finished here in another few hours they really come to life especially when we put the title on them and uh, Sue's a trooper. She's a little under the weather, but she's still hanging in there and, and doing a fantastic job, which is typical for Sue. She's uh, one of the finest sand sculptors in the world. We really look forward to seeing what she comes up with a finished product here. How you doing, Sue? <laughs> she's a trooper. She's a trooper. She really is. It's a beautiful piece. What she's got going here is interactivity before, between the front and the back an interactive piece and it's more difficult to do something that interacts than it is to do a standalone piece. You have to kind of pull it all together and make sure it all makes sense. She's doing a nice job. I like her textures on this thing and the flow of it. But like I say, she's got a few more hours to go and she's got a long way to go. She's got to carve this thing all the way down to the ground and finish the groundwork on it. We're here at plot number four with Suzanne Rusler from the Netherlands and uh, she has a way of really bringing you into her sculptures. I like the interaction between the, looks like a griffin sort of animal and the, and the little boy. And uh, she has a way of, of really, really connecting with the people on what she does. I love the movement, I love the emotion, I love everything she's doing. She's got some really nice difficulty in the piece. It's very sheer, she's got some cut throughs. This loop on the tail here is phenomenal. But just how the, how the griffin and the little boy are, is it a griffin? Yes, uh, and uh, the young man are just interacting is, is really lovely. We're at the back side of Suzanne Rusler's piece here, the griffin on the front, the little boy. She still has a lot to do in the back. It's beautiful what she's done, but if you, if you pan down a little bit, we see this big pile of sand that she has to do something with because if you don't use all your sand here, you know, you get a low score on that because we have different categories. So one of the categories is usage of sand. And you can see that she's going to have to do something with this to score, score high in that category. We're here with Deb Catulli doing her little genie piece. It's beautiful. Now, Deb's kind of a newcomer to solo uh, uh, to competition. She's not a newcomer to art or sculpture. But this is her first time with the big dogs here, you know. So she's got a lot of pressure on her shoulders. Looks like she's got a good piece going here. It's got some movement in it. And she's still got a bit of work to do on the ground and the top, but uh, we'll see she, how she does on this one. I'm excited for Deb. We're here with Andrus, uh, and he is putting the final touches on his sculpture here. Looks like the, uh, this, the scales on this side, and um, it's a beautiful piece. Absolutely gorgeous. And, and when we when we walk around to the other side and, and to the side of it here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He's got a lot of danger in this piece too because it's eight feet tall and it's sheer. In fact, it's, it's leaning a little bit forward and you'll see why when we look at the back of this thing. But when we look at it from the side, you'll see how this thing is actually leaning to one side. That's very dangerous for sand like we've been talking about. Um, there's such a small footprint here. The sand, there's so much pressure on that sand at the bottom that this thing could come down at any time. We're at the side or the side view of, uh, of Andrus's piece. And if you see the buildings behind, they're, they're built at level and plumb. The plumb lines are going straight up and down. You can see how this thing is leaning, leaning toward Andrus here. And it has so much pressure on the bottom of this sculpture, you would not believe. There's probably 10,000 pounds of sand sitting there, densely compacted sand. And he's got four little guys or girls or people in the back that are pushing this, kind of sway the hands of justice, I guess. The whole thing is leaning. An excellent idea and very dangerous. 
This is Steve Tapazio working on his dragon here. And uh, of course he's down on his knees because he's just finishing up this piece. You gotta go all the way to the ground. That's how we get judged here. But this is different for Steve because I've, in the past years I've seen Steve do a lot of cartoony kind of stuff. And this one's much more intricate. We were talking before about interactive pieces. Well, this is interactive with all these bands he's got going around here in the flames and how the dragon kind of is all, all a part of this. And that's really different from what I've seen out of Steve before. And I'm interested to see what he pulls off with the groundwork here. It's all hands and knees for Steve from here on out. Nice job, Stevie. We're here with Leonardo Uglini from Italy. And he's got a great piece going on here. He's doing a little bit of work in the back here, which looks like a little guy in a bucket floating. Maybe his rescue boat, his life raft, I'm not sure yet. Back, This is a new piece. He just put this together this morning in the back. You can see the cracking up front there. I'm not sure what he's going to do with the groundwork here, but Leo's pretty good about using all his sand. We talked about that earlier, that a lot of people have a lot of work to do because we judge you. We give everybody the same amount of sand, and we want to see it used. We're at the front side or the A side of Leonardo's piece here. And the first thing he did, of course, was his pound up, which is the main piece there. But the first thing he carved with this little ship out front, which is just magnificent, it's a little sailboat. It kind of puts in proportion um, how big the Kraken or the octopus really is. And I like the way he's got the movement here, the interaction, all the flowy lines and the intensity of the Kraken's mouth there. It's a pretty cool piece. It's so layered too. Plus what he's putting on in the back here, it's it's not like most of the pieces here, it's just one glump of sand. This thing is very, very layered, so you got to really walk around it and see everything that's going on here. We're here with Danny Belcher from St. Louis, Missouri. And I, I didn't know what he was doing for a few days, but now it's all coming together, if you can see it. If you've ever played rock, paper, scissors, I mean, that's it. I hate to break it to you, and if you didn't know what it was, but it's pretty apparent right now. You got the fist, you got the cover, and you got the scissors. So, pretty extraordinary. And of course, Danny, he's, he's, he's one of the best sculptors in the world. And you get it's just the smoothness, his textures, and the way he, he, he brings things out of the sand is pretty incredible. And we're so happy to have him here. We're at the backside of Danny Belcher's piece. And uh, the thing about Dan Belcher, he's very smart on his pound up he uses most all of his sand in his pound up which is nice what you're seeing on the ground here is just the carvings the tailings whatever you want to call it, from what he's already done and knowing dan he's going to finish this thing all the way down to the native sand here on the beach and not a whole lot of people are going to be able to do that in the time that's left we're here with morgan Rudloff. uh she's still working on her piece she's really scrambling here you can see that it's a beautiful top which she got started there, but she's got just a few hours to finish this thing all the way to the ground. So we're not going to talk to her too much because she's in a hurry right now. But this is a big step for Morgan too. A solo event at this level of competition and what she's putting out here is a very, very nice product. She should be proud of it. We're at the back of Morgan's piece. You can see she just took off her bottom form. That's what she compacted this in. And most everybody had theirs off yesterday, but she just took hers off. So she still has almost all of the back of the car, the sides of the car, all the way to the ground. And we just have a few hours left here. So she's going to have to scramble to get this done. But knowing Morgan, she's pretty tenacious. We shouldn't have a problem there. <laughs> it's the last day of the competition, and I've just gone through the first 10 sculptures here. And Meredith's going to take it from here and take you through the last five of the sculptors on this final day of the Revere Beach International Competition. The Revere Beach Relay. That's what, relay. We, we just did the relay there. All right, we're going to go do 11 through 15 right now. Come on down. <laughs> 